the Astros are in the hot stove season. A stove has been cold. Yeah. Can I get the stove cold. to get a little hot, please? Like, I need some action. I need somebody to sign somewhere of significance. I know that there, there's been some some pretty big deals. Aaron Nola went back to the Phillies on a huge deal yesterday. The Cardinals announced that they signed Sonny Gray to a big deal, but there's been nothing on the Astros other than the uh, Alex Bregman talk that we've had because, well, the Alex Bregman talk has not been fun because he's, of course, got a um, contract that's up after next season, and there's some talk that the Astros are listening on offers for him. But you know what? I'm going to call my shot. He's playing here next year the entire season. He walks in free agency. It is what it is. They will be okay. I also made my guarantee yesterday that Luis Roberts is going to be an Astro, so, you know. There's that. It's on the guarantee list. It's on the guarantee list. But Jim Bowden, former MLB GM, uh, like Jim Duquette, who we heard from yesterday, uh, they actually work together at SiriusXM, but he also writes for The Athletic. And he put together a list, and he did this for all 30 teams in here. It's MLB Hot Stove Matchmaking, a free agent fit for all 30 teams as the winter meetings near, which are, I believe, next week. In Nashville, maybe, I think. So we should see a little bit of uh, action next week um, in the winter meetings. Yes, by the way, they're in Nashville, Tennessee. So there you go. Um, a week from today, actually, is when the winter meetings start, I guess. So that'll be a, a hopefully a fun period of time for baseball. But he put a match for all 30 teams, and we'll go start off with the Houston Astros, of course. And he put them getting... Jordan Hicks, the reliever who spent the majority of his career with the Cardinals, was traded to the Blue Jays last year, uh, throws about 105 miles an hour. They, he puts the Astros getting him at a three-year, $30 million deal. He says, the Astros' main personnel goal this offseason is to add to their strong bullpen, and Hicks would be a smart acquisition in that regard as he could pitch important, medium, to high leverage innings for them in the 6th, 7th, and 8th. He is finally healthy and back throwing in the triple digits. The Blue Jays acquired him from the Cardinals at the trade deadline last season, and he pitched well for Toronto, posting a 263 ERA in 25 appearances with four saves. Overall, he logged a 329 ERA in 66 appearances with 81 strikeouts in 65 and two-thirds innings with 12 saves. I will say it. If that's the Astros offseason right there, outside of you know getting some extensions, I'd be okay with it. Sign me up. Give me Jordan Hicks all day. Yeah, I'd be totally fine with it. He's a Houston kid too. He pit, he he went to Side Creek, so he's from the area. I forgot from, about from that. the area close to me. So you're you're bringing a hometown kid home. A I lot don't of know if I want him now. Why? Because he's. I don't be- like Side Creek. Oh, <laughs> nobody likes Side Creek. <laughs> well, that's true. I that's what. Well, I I don't care either way. But I have heard Cy, that nobody likes Side Creek. Nah, but, they were actually my one of my favorite schools to always play because we always beat. It was one, just beat one the of the few off schools of in the district we could beat at anything. I just love the. He's only twenty seven years old. And and that is the one area where I know there's a lot of other areas where where we'd like to see the Astros add some talent, add some add some arms and some other to the starting rotation, possibly if you can find a way to do that. But if if this is the first move that they make and it's the biggest move that they make, I'd be totally fine with it because that's what I would like to see them get more arms and high leverage situations because that is what they needed the most in the playoffs. That is what they consistently needed the most in the playoffs. And if we're looking at this team to make another run. And try to try to you know maybe they go back to an ALCS and maybe it's against the Rangers again. I would very very much like to have a guy who could come in in some of those higher leverage situations and try to close down some of the bats that they're going to see in in important games. Yeah, I mean, look, we saw how important the bullpen is, especially last year when the Astros didn't have a rotation. Like you said, they you couldn't count on. Right, and there's there are still a lot of question marks. I think that it would be great if they could add a starter to the mix, and you know I don't think that that's impossible I think that they could find a way to do that in some sort of fashion but we don't know what we're going to see out of Fromber Valdez is he going to bounce back or is he going right. to be the guy that was in his head the second half of the season and be pissed off well uh is Christian Javier going to pitch like the guy that he did for the majority of the postseason or be the guy in the regular season that was terrible is Justin Verlander going to be good but not ace level like or is he going to get back what is he going to be he's 41 years old There's a lot of wear on that body even after the surgery where it makes your arm stronger or whatever um you know, I I love the thing that Lance McCullers says he expects to pitch in twenty twenty four. Well, God, yeah. I hope so. I mean, crap, you barely played in three years or whatever it is. You're making like seventeen million a year for the next three years. Your ass better get out there, even if you have to throw left handed at some point, <laughs> please. Um, I mean, then so there's, they, and then there's the a, Hunter Brown equation too. Yeah, what is, is he going to continue to grow and develop? What well, is he going to look like? In my scenario, of course, 
if you're making a deal with the White Sox, Hunter, Hunter Brown's, Brown's gone. He's gone. Well, well, there's one. There was one guy in here that I saw where it was like the hot stove matchups with the Colorado Rockies. They had the Rockies signing Marcus Stroman for three years, seventy-seven million. Uh, R.I.P. to Marcus Stroman's career. Yeah, he's so he's that. He'd be the, the talk about one of the worst fits you could have in Denver, Colorado. Marcus Stroman. He throws <laughs> a bunch of bendy stuff, which is nice, but that stuff doesn't break as much there, uh-huh. and just would be a rocket ship. It'd be awful. But if, if you would you see the Astros doing something like this, three years, seventy-seven million for a pitcher like that? Not a chance. No, nah, because especially because of who he is in his in his career, he'd be the back end of the rotation. He, I don't even know that he'd be in the front end. So I, there there aren't many pitchers on this list where it makes sense. Either it's a guy that you don't really need because he's just going to give you more of what you already have, or it's going to be a guy that's going to cost too much. They had Jordan Montgomery going to the Orioles, by the way. Yeah, in this which article, it's fine by me. Get yeah. him out of the Rangers rotation because for some reason the Astros can't hit him, even though he's a guy that they should be able to hit. The rest of the division for the fits that Jim Bowden here has, uh, this will always make you feel good. He has the Rangers signing Josh Hader, which is a very uh, real um, rumor across the entire industry. Five years, one hundred four million is what he projects he'll get. God. I mean, after Edwin Diaz got over a hundred million from the Mets, yeah, it's a lock that he's getting a hundred million. It's stupid. Nobody should ever pay a reliever that much money. Like it is just the dumbest thing ever. I would never do it. These guys, like I'm not trying to be a a D word about it. You can find a really good closer and keep him on deals where he makes between ten and fifteen a year. And if he doesn't want that or he wants more, you can move on and you can piece together bullpens for two two year windows. That's why relievers don't get more than two or three year deals at a time. Where are the Rangers printing all this money from? I really don't know. Yeah, they, who's they, their owner? I don't. I don't remember. Um, I wonder. Like, I want to know what he does. They. I mean, it's not like they were making money left and right. I mean, now that they're Ray gonna be, Davis. They're going to be making more money now that they've won a World Series. But they had a tough time. They've had a very tough time filling that stadium up since they bought it. Um, so I. That's. I don't know. And Ray Davis is eighty-two years yeah. old. Jesus Christ! I didn't even realize he's that old. Um, so good for that's. You know what? It's just like the Dan, his net worth is, is the internet says two point nine billion. But that's just like the owner that just died for the Padres. He's at the end of his life. He's like, bleep it. I'm gonna spend all my money on baseball players. <laughs> and you know what? I don't blame him for it one bit. That's part of me. I'm not trying to put Jim Crane in the grave yet, but Jim's not young anymore. And Jim's what? He's sixty nine. Jim. Yeah, I mean I know you got some kids, but you got other businesses that they can inherit. You know, they don't if the if the baseball loses a little bit of money for you, whatever. Spend that money, baby. There's no, you can't take your money to, with you to the grave. You'll leave enough of a legacy. You'll be all right. Just saying. I look, I I, I see what they're doing and how it worked and I just I'm a little jealous. I would like to see a little bit of that. Like I would like to see like you just said, I'd like to see him just Spend a little bit more. Go, yeah. go a little bit farther. Get a little Ray Davis yeah, just, on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ray Davis Ray Davis bought the Rangers in 2010, but I was like, that was it towards the back half, the end of my fandom of the team. And so I didn't even remember that he bought them, but he bought them for like $500 million, and it has paid off for him. 